at smallcapvoice.com. And today we're doing an interview once again with Cliff Emmons. Cliff is the CEO of IIoT Oxus. They had some great news out this week. Let me give you the headline and the dateline, February 24th, 2022. IIoT Oxus signs an NDA with European Medical Device Equipment as a Service Startup. Now there's a lot to unpack in this press release. So we're lucky enough to be joined by the CEO once again, Cliff Emmons. Cliff, thanks for making time for us. Great to be here, Stuart. Well, let's jump into this. Now, we've all, or many of us have heard of SaaS companies, service as a software. In this press release, for the first time for myself, we are looking at equipment as a service. So that's E-A-A-S. Let's touch on that for the listeners that that might be new for, and give us some background on this area. In the press release, you do a nice job of talking about this market size. Let's go into that now. Excellent. Happy to do that. So actually, even though it may be a new phrase to some people, it's actually been a concept that's been around quite a while. In fact, when Henry Ford first conceived his idea of what the Model A would be, he actually envisioned a chassis engine and everything ready to go, but then a modularized ability to kind of change the car going forward. So it's it's not an, an old uh, it is a concept that's been around for a while. Also, I think the easiest way to understand what equipment as a service means is you could even go back to the earlier days of copier, uh, copy machines. In Xerox, actually, one of its first business models in order to place uh, what were very expensive uh, machines at the time actually used a pay-as-you-go price per copy model. And of course, if you really even think back to even the later years of copy machines, that was also something that companies started to do was actually just simply charge you for the actual copies you made as opposed to the total cost of the machine. So let's fast forward to today. And what does that mean uh, in the technology that we talk about as far as industrial internet of things? With the types of technology we have now, uh, we can actually talk about metal, uh, medical equipment or medical devices as equipment as a service model. In fact, some of the pioneers in this, uh, some of the larger uh, OEMs such as GE in their MRI machines, in their CAT scan machines, because they're large pieces of capital equipment to make it easier for a hospital or a facility to utilize these uh, equipment, they actually uh, actually set up an actual service agreement to use the use uh, based, you pay based on the use of the machine as opposed to paying for the whole machine. However, it was a little difficult to do for say smaller machines, uh, machines such as ultrasounds or even uh, cautery machines and things along those lines. But with the ever decreasing cost of uh, technology for IoT and connectivity, and the power of analytics between AI and machine learning, it becomes very possible to actually use this uh, for all types of medical devices and to give even small and medium-sized uh, equipment manufacturers, OEMs, to utilize this model. Well, listeners, let me point out that we did an earlier audio interview with Cliff going over the business model, the markets they operate in. I want you to refer back to that audio interview to learn more about this company. Cliff, this specific press release talks about the NDA being the first step in a process. Can you give us an idea of what comes next and a timeline for further developments with this European medical device equipment as a service company? Absolutely. But before I do, I do want to make one last point about the equipment as a service market. This is a, a very uh, lucrative market for us to get into. In 2019, it was estimated that the global EAAS uh, business was at 22 billion uh, US dollars worldwide, and it was projected to grow at 35% CAGR and actually reach 131 billion by 2025. So with that said, let me talk about what follows the NDA process. It's very typical for us to 
after the NDA process to sit with the, uh, with the customer, identify what their goals are, and actually design a POC or proof of concept. With that proof of concept, we can basically show them the value proposition of the equipment as a service model and for their people to get familiar with utilizing the software and the capabilities that are behind it, such as the analytics that I spoke of earlier. Then after the POC is successfully completed, we move into a subscription phase, which is very easy, straightforward, and it allows the customer then to begin to reap all the benefits of the equipment as a service model. Well, very good. So what specifically drew you to this company? Obviously you pointed out this is a very lucrative market for your company to tap into, but specifically to this agreement, how did you find this company and what drew you to them? Well, I think it's a, my job as CEO to constantly be looking for interesting companies with very uh, forward thinking leaders. And it was actually through my usual uh, types of outreach uh, through LinkedIn and through keeping my eye uh, on several different types of, of webinars and such that I came across uh, this particular company uh, in the EU. And after a short conversation with this leader, it was very obvious that they really had a, a very deep understanding of how to make equipment as a service work as a business model, but also a great understanding of how technology has come along to en enable it uh, to a high degree. So I, I did some more research, found out that there are niche players in this market, but a whole lot of opportunity for us to partner with this, this company that has actually had successful proof of concepts in Europe and actually bring them here to the US. Excellent. Well, as the press release points out, this is one of several NDAs and LOIs your company has been able to execute as well as pursue. Now, let's do a recap from our last audio interview with you. Let's touch on those target markets that you'd like to see IIT, IIoT, OXIS, ticker symbol I should have given out as well, listeners, uh, viewers is ITOX. ITOX is the ticker symbol for the company. Cliff, where do you want to see your company this time next year in regards to the markets that you are navigating? Absolutely. And I, I do really want to uh, touch on uh, one last point uh, about how we found this company. It needs to be a mutual feeling, right? And I would say that the other thing that drew us together was the uh, the owner and uh, CEO of this company recognized that my background and Karen, my COO's background in the medical device industry, the fact that we're a Boston based area company just really resonated with him uh, because really all of the top players in medical devices exist here right in the greater Boston area. So a huge opportunity for us to partner through our network with these companies. That's a great that said, point. In addition to the e, uh, EAAS market that we're exploring here, our core market is definitely around smart manufacturing. We've already proven ourselves to the continuous manufacturing area in, in the idea of big pharma uh, and biotech, but we've also definitely have made inroads uh, as we have spoke of before into the medical device industry and its whole supply chain, which means the whole realm of uh, metal uh, forming, metal machining, plastic injection molding, uh, plastic extrusion, and semi and automated assembly equipment. All of these things benefit from IIoT and the power of the analytics between AI and machine learning. So in that area, we would like to see ourselves go from the few proof of concepts that we had to definitely get penetration so that we're in the order of half a dozen to a dozen customers. Likewise, in our area of structural health monitoring, we're looking to actually continue the original work that we started. And we are very excited about the, the reaction and the feedback that we've gotten uh, from our past uh, past employers in this area. So we're very excited there. 
So uh, we actually have other areas that we uh, continue to explore in expanding this, this whole idea of how does IIoT and AI and machine learning work together uh, to get us to these new levels of productivity uh, throughout many manufacturing sectors. Yeah, and I think that's an important point that you just touched out is the things that you can improve upon. And we did an article here at smallcapvoice.com. I encourage our audience to seek that out at smallcapvoice.com. Just click on our clients tab, find IIoT Oxus there. You'll find the article underneath. You can also go to our media tab. You can find the videos, the audio, the blogs, everything you need to keep you up to date with what's going on with this company, which is really it's an exciting time for the company. If you talk about the things that you can bring to some of your customers in terms of increased efficiency, uh, increased safety, and that safety leads to saving bottom line and increasing your bottom line and awareness before a part breaks. These are the types of things that in these manufacturing processes that your company can perfect and alert. And, you know, it, it, it seems limitless, the possibilities for your company. Cliff, Thank you so much for making time for us once again here at smallcapvoice.com. Thanks for having me, Stuart. All right, for Cliff Emmons, this is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for joining us.